Not everyone who says to Me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of My Father who is in heaven will enter. And the Holy Spirit spoke to Me. The gift of faith came on Me. He said, kick her in the face with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. BAM! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? The Lord also tells me to tell you in the mid-90s, about 94, 95, no later than that, God will destroy the homosexual community of America. But He will not destroy it with what many minds have thought Him to be. He will destroy it with fire. And many will turn and be saved, and many will rebel and be destroyed. And in your name cast out demons. And I de detach him from autism and every diagnosis put upon him. And I declare on three, every spirit attached to which she renounced, every spirit of autism and mental sickness must leave in Jesus' name. One, two, three. And in your name perform many miracles. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now then, you guys just help him up. Help him up. Power of God's all over him. He's not hurt. He's not hurt. Praise the God. Praise the Lord. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. There are few things more evil than blatantly deceiving people using the name of Jesus Christ. Yet there are countless so-called Christian pastors today who shamelessly do this exact thing. We already saw Todd Bentley deceive people into believing that doing ridiculously violent things like kicking a woman in the face is a way to spiritually bless people. We saw Benny Hinn make a completely false prophecy and never repent of pretending he heard this from God. We saw Catherine Crick pretend to cast the demon out of a boy with autism. And we saw Kenneth Copeland pretend that the power of God was all over a man in a wheelchair that he knocked down. All of this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's also Todd White, who performs an obvious and known leg lengthening scam in the name of Jesus Christ. Any problems at all physically? Uh, my back isn't the best. But what I'll do, regardless of what you believe, I'm going to pray for you, and Jesus is going to grow your leg out and heal your back. So, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Left leg, I command you grow right now. Jesus' name. Look at it. You see it? Whoa. Look at that. Can you guys see that right there? Yes. Right. It's longer now than the other one. I'm not, like, out here to say you need to No, dude. God loves you, bro. And that's it, man. Semper Fi, man. The worst part of what Todd does is that he knowingly deceives people with a supposed miracle that is a known scam. Arlington's and snake oil salesmen have been doing this trick for decades. It's sleight of hand. Now we're going to see Todd White's clip sped up quite a bit and looped back and forth. Now this is where we can see what's really going on here. The leg on our right is supposed to be the short leg, and this is the leg which should be miraculously growing, but it's not. Look at the leg on our left. That's where all the action is. That's what's actually being manipulated. You can see that Todd is actually pivoting or shifting the foot of the so-called long leg so that the heels match. Now, he's doing this very slowly over time, but it's painfully obvious when you speed up the clip. And what he is doing is the most hateful thing you could possibly do for someone. There's also Sid Roth, who shamelessly says the quiet part out loud. First. Take a look at what these charlatan preachers are doing, and then listen to Sid Roth reveal the truth about what they are doing. Especially Kenneth Copeland Ministries Canada, and it is, and, and the, the territories under which the Canadian office uh, is. She go on. Let every worship the Lord. Rise up this day and oh, sepala manama, erepe, eribo, ahaha. Oh, 
Corridius de Paha, O Refia de Paha, O Repassianama, to drink, 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 to do the rest. I can't do it for you, but I can tell you how to pray in supernatural languages. So you start speaking like little baby words and say them as fast as you humanly can when I begin to pray. If you don't move your tongue and speak, no one else will do it. If you don't move your tongue and speak, no one else will do it. I say faster. I said faster. You can do it faster than that. If I had a gun in your ribs, you'd do it faster. You can do it faster than that. If I had a gun in your ribs, you could do it faster. Can't you just see the Apostle Paul saying something like this? Do it faster, faster. If I had a dagger in your side, you could do it faster than that. Does that even remotely look like what we just saw illustrated? Does that even remotely look like what we see in the book of Acts? Absolutely not. This is, this is pagan. This is the flesh. Sid Roth revealed that when people like Kenneth Copeland, Paula White, Benny Hinn, and countless others speak in tongues, they have basically trained themselves to speak nonsense with confidence, which deceives their followers into thinking they have a special connection with God, when the reality is that they do not. But it gets even worse than this. Take a look at this unbelievable video that Shepard Bushiri posted, which is basically a very bad magic trick intended to trick his audience into thinking it is actually a miracle. It seems absolutely obvious that the reason why the video zooms in before Shepard Bushiri starts quote unquote floating is to hide the fact that there are other people holding him up who are outside the camera's frame during this time. This video would be very funny if we didn't know that there are countless people who have been deceived into thinking that Shepard Bushiri actually has the power from God to perform miracles. And it doesn't end here. No, not even close. Here's another scam that many supposed faith healers like Benny Hinn and Todd Bentley perform, which has also been exported to numerous supposed pastors in Africa also. Somebody that's died, even in the morgue, I'm telling you, somebody's being resurrected from the dead, somewhere. No mind. You're healing so it, Lord. All you got to do is hold me tight. Because Reverse the disease. Because I'm a dino mind. Spiritual conditions are being dealt with right now. Come out. Every lying devil exit out of these people in the name of Jesus. I'm to bring glory to God. Bring, bring, bring him here. Bring him, bring him, bring him, bring him. Bring him. You're back on the floor. The right hand of God is power. I command healing on you in the name of Jesus. These are all pastors who need to continue convincing their followers that they have a special connection to God, apart from simply knowing and teaching the Word of God, in order to get people to follow and give to their ministries. Jesse Duplantis is an example of just how far these charlatan pastors will go to deceive their followers. Duplantis has said an unbelievable number of absolutely ridiculous things. This is just one of them. So I walk from the back of the church up the front, 
as I was walking, people began to point their fingers at me. One of my tape men were there, Brother Fritz Brown. They were pointing their fingers at me. Look at Brother Justin. Then they began to look like this. I was lit up like a, I mean, like a light. I mean, I'm shining. I can't see it. I mean, I look in the mirror. I just see this Cajun face. I don't see nothing. Lit up. People going. So they start looking for, like, for television lights to see what was on my face. And when I walked to the platform, the pastor was just, he went, he just backed up. I, I was going to go sit down at the little half pew they got right there. And he just met, motioned me to come. And I just came and I said, I've been in the presence of God. Duplantis says his face was shining because he had been in the presence of Jesus himself. But it gets even worse. Just listen to the supposed conversation Duplantis had with Jesus. He said, no one else wanted you. But I need you, boy. I need you, Jesse. I said, okay. I'll tell every soul I meet that you're coming. He said, I brought you here for this. Duplantis said that Jesus was crying and said he needed Jesse. Absolutely blasphemous. And again, this is designed to scam people into following and giving to his ministry. There's also Kat Kerr, who claims to have visited heaven thousands of times. For anyone that's new, Kat's been to heaven, along with a lot of other people, even ones that I know, yeah. personally have had visited heaven. You've had hundreds or thousands of times. Thousands of times. Cat Kerr goes to heaven with more regularity than you and I would go to the, to the bathroom. And here's Cat Kerr talking about visiting a place called Christmas Town in heaven. Christmas Town is actually a place in heaven. And for those who don't know me, um, you, you may not be able to wrap, wrap your natural mind around anything that I say. Again, all of this would be funny if we didn't know that charlatans like these are deceiving countless people in the name of Jesus Christ. The very sad reality is that there are thousands, perhaps millions, of professing Christians who either teach this utterly distorted version of the gospel, or who have been deceived into believing this distorted version of the gospel, who will be utterly surprised when they meet God and discover that they worshipped a false God and a false Jesus, and believed in a gospel that does not save sinners from their sins. External Christianity, professing Christianity, possesses millions of people who feel like Christians, who have been induced into thinking they are Christians, who live with the hope of entering heaven and escaping hell. But we'll find at the end that they were wrong. There are millions of people who claim to believe in Jesus, who use His name, who call Him Lord, who say they believe in Him, expecting heaven only to receive hell. Our Lord saw this at the beginning of His ministry. These people may be very passionate about Jesus and what they think Jesus does for them, but the version of Jesus they believe in is so far off from the true biblical Jesus that it would not even be accurate to say that they truly believe in the Jesus of the Bible. Well, first and foremost, it's important that we get the gospel right because if we don't, there are people out there, including ourselves, who will be duped into believing that they are right with God when in fact they are at enmity with Him. You believe the wrong gospel, it doesn't matter how sincere you are in your belief. You are merely sincerely wrong. Many will think that this sounds very harsh or unloving to say, but Jesus Himself taught that many will call Him Lord, Lord, yet will be cast into hell. The reason for this is that the true gospel involves acknowledging and repenting of sin trusting in Jesus' atoning work alone for their salvation, and living lives obedient and submissive to all that God has revealed. But countless professing Christians teach and believe that the gospel is primarily about receiving blessings from God. Why is there so little power today? Because we don't know the gospel, because we don't concern ourselves with true conversion, because we don't make the important things important, but we replace it with the proper use of media in the service, with the right kind of singing to alter the mood, with flashy speakers who tell us everything we want to hear so that we can have our best life now because that is indeed what we want, more than God. There is no power because the gospel is lost. You bring the gospel back and you'll see the power of God move upon the lives of men, women, and children. The simple Gospel. People who are part of this kind of radical charismatic movement believe that they must be right with God because of the enormous number of people who believe in this kind of theology. But the truth is that just because a movement is very popular and draws enormous numbers does not at all mean that it is biblical or correct. That's why 
talking to a pastor from Nigeria this morning. He said, I used to be in a charismatic church. We had a thousand people. I saw the truth. I left the charismatic church, and now I teach the truth. I have a hundred people. That's the broad way. And again, the ticket sellers are introduced to you in verses 15 to 20, false prophets. And they're really good at what they do, and they have the kingdom of darkness on their side. On the other hand, narrow is the way. Once you get on, it's narrow. What does that mean? It's very constricted. What constricts it? The Word of God, right? As Christians who believe in and proclaim the true gospel of God's wrath against sin, hell, repentance, faith alone in Jesus alone, and obedience to all that God has commanded in the Bible, it can be easy to be intimidated by popular pastors with enormous audiences who dilute, distort, or compromise on the gospel in order to reach a broader audience and who tout their numbers. Over 500 people have given their lives to Jesus for the first time in this church in the last five months. That's over 100 per month. We now have 9,173 home Bible studies in homes in 162 Southern California cities. Because Southern Baptists taught me the value of church planting. As I already mentioned, we planted 90 in Orange County alone and literally thousands around the world. Because Southern Baptists taught me to honor and love the local church, I've had the privilege for 43 years of training 1.1 million pastors. That, sorry friends, that's more than all the seminaries put together. Just because we see smaller numbers does not at all mean that we are doing something wrong. And the pastors with enormous numbers are doing something right. On the contrary, what Jesus taught us about the way being narrow and not broad should lead us to be suspicious of ministries that have enormous numbers because they are loved by most of the world. Your reputation or your finances are at stake. It can feel just as threatening, Pastor, when, when the numbers start to dwindle and you see Smiling Joel on TV preaching to a stadium filled with people. Do I really have to preach all of this? Do I really have to preach it this hard? We need to understand that passion and zeal does not equate to genuine faithfulness or genuine belief in the biblical gospel. Lord, Lord, there's some zeal in that, right? There's some passion in that. There's some respect in that. Uh, that, that that's orthodox to some degree. Lord, Lord, they say. Did, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? They talk about these wonders. They, they don't talk about, did we not repent in your name? Did we not obey in your name? Three times in verse 22, in your name, in your name, in your name. You can throw the name of Jesus around all you want. You can sing it 50 times in one song. It's coming. It's coming. And like the Charismatics Jesus must have had in mind in the future, including today, they think the proof that they are His is in their prophecies, their exorcisms, and their miracles. Did they really do them? Of course not. Of course not. Jesus Himself taught that countless people will be in hell who truly believe they know God and who truly believe they are performing miracles and casting out demons. Well, it's going to be filled with people, sadly, who were involved in this prophesying, exercising demons, and doing miracles. They claim to be worshipers, Lord, Lord, and then they say it again, Lord, Lord, once in verse 21, once in verse 22. They, 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 they sing the music, they feel the energy, they're in the middle of the experience, but when they show up on that day, Verse 22 says, when they show up on that day, that day of final judgment, I will declare to them, I never knew you. It wasn't that I once knew you and you slipped. I never knew you. Depart from me into hell, you who practice lawlessness. It's about what you practice. It's not about these kinds of experiences that can be falsely induced. Literally, in the Greek, he says, I have never known you. Never. So Christians, let's not be tempted by the flashiness and the popularity of these radical, charismatic preachers. But rather, let's make sure we understand, believe, and proclaim the true, simple gospel that God has revealed in Scripture. And let's make sure we don't add anything to it in order to attract larger numbers. Let's go 
forward, and not primarily to defend the gospel, but to do what some of us have done now for decades, proclaim the gospel, and then stand to one side and admire as the gospel of Jesus Christ defends itself and proves its power. But the gospel we preach must not be adorned with eloquence. It not, must not be adorned with your intellect. The raw gospel, the real gospel, the gospel of the cross, the gospel of blood, the gospel of vicarious suffering. If we will proclaim it, we will see the glory of God. We will see the glory of God. But, but remember this, to the degree that you trust in the arm of the flesh, you will see less of this power of which I speak. And the more you abandoned all these carnal trappings of modern evangelicalism, the more you will behold the power of God, a preacher standing alone, defying the world with a message of love. Christ came to save sinners, among whom I am chief. Let's trust in the clear teachings of Scripture and Scripture's own teaching that it is sufficient to live lives that are pleasing and glorifying to God, instead of thinking that we need more than Scripture to impress the world, because anything that adds to Scripture is not from God, but is from the devil. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help me in my mission to spread biblical truth, just subscribe and watch these videos until the end, which will help the YouTube algorithm recommend these videos to more people. I'm committed to using the skills and gifts God has given me to glorify Him and communicate biblical truth, and I would be so grateful if you would come be a part of what I'm building. You can visit my website at joyfulexile.com to learn more about me and what I'm working on. I hope you're having a blessed day. I will see you in the next video, and remember, this world is not our home.